Hey everybody, let's take a look at setting up a FK Apex rig setup. So we have an arm, basically I just had this full character imported, then I, in a subnet, did a whole bunch of stuff just to remove and clean up the geometry so that we only have the arm here to work with. This is just instead of geometry node, a character FBX import, and then we have that. So how do we set up the arm and the joints and everything. With the joints, I like to do an add. It will give us a point if we click number of points, one, and then we can basically position it. So if we push space two, we can kind of finish, position it there, and then space three, go into the front viewport, and take that, and actually we can just bring it straight up in the Y, position it where the elbow is going to be. And then we can, yeah, we'll just do one at a time. So on this one here, I want it where the elbow is going to be. And then let's check on the top view here. Put it kind of more back there. And then go back and check to make sure that's still where we want it. And it is. And then to make a copy, I'm just holding down Alt and then dragging. You like click drag to be able to make a copy. So on this one space one we're going to move it all the way to where the wrist is and space three bring it down oops too close <laughs> uh, let me go to space one space one is perspective and i just want to look at where that placement is for the rotation and it might just be a little bit too far in that looks better where it's going to actually rotate from. Okay, so we have these three points. We can give them names so that way it is easier to follow. But actually, we'll do that in a moment. Let's take this and put it all in a merge. So we can get all three of these and connect them into the merge. So that way we have all three points. So one, two, three. And then let's do another add node. And on this add node, Instead of adding a point, what we're going to go is switch over to polygons, go to by group, and we can see that it creates the polygon edges to connect all of our joints together. And then now from here, we're going to do a name. And with the name here, if we look at the point numbers, go 0, 1, 2, in the order that we merged them over here from. So it's going to be shoulder, elbow, wrist. So let's create three. The first one is going to be zero, it's point zero, and the it's going to be the shoulder. Point one is going to be the elbow, point two is going to be the wrist. Very cool. Now let's go ahead and create a capture to this geometry here, and we can turn off the point numbers. So we're going to do a joint capture by harmonic. First one we need is the geometry. Then these two inputs are going to go into the next two. And we have an error. Oh, because they're not a skeleton yet. So let's cut that. And let's cut this for a, actually we can keep that in there. We can do a rig doctor. And the rig doctor converts those edges and points to be the setup for our skeleton and you can see that the orientation is oriented to the world with the way we created the joints so let's initialize the transforms and reorient to child and you can see that now we have the orientation of the joints looking properly and if we look at the geometry spreadsheet we don't have the names it's giving us default names because we have inside of here initialize missing names and it's point underscore so what happened when we try to create the name here, we're setting it to primitives, but the joints are actually points. So there we go. We have the points in their name. And if we look in the rig doctor now, those 0 0.1 and 0.2 are renamed to the names that we set it. Now that we've actually converted it into a rig doctor, let's connect them into the two joint by harmonics puts there. So one is the rest pose, the other one is the deform pose. So let's go to the scene view and we can see the binding. That looks good. Now let's create a couple nulls 
and we're going to have our out geo and that's going to be the first input from this joint by harmonic and then really we can connect it from the pose here if we wanted to this is going to be our out scale so it's our skeleton Let's see that we got the joints there that is great now we need to pack these into a folder so we're going to go pack folder and one two they both go into the second input and here I'm going to rename this it's going to be base and then if we look at this drop down menu here we have shape so that's going to be the geometry which is the first one coming in and then the second one coming in is going to be the skeleton which is going to be base scale so you can type it in but you can also just click on skeleton and it will update it with that same acronym or the name cool so we have both of those elements in there now and then let's start our apex setup so we'll do a apex auto rig component connect the first input there and this is going to be our fk setup and instead of bowden to form we're going to go to fk transform there you go and that should give us the ability for them to rotate and you can see that we have the controls in the setup here working nicely but the geometry is not connected even though we have it up here that's because we need to add a auto rig component and in this one it is going to be the bone deform so if we select these we get the deformation that we're looking for and then let's add a scene, or an apex scene animate. And then we can take these and I'm just gonna push K at frame one and let's say at frame 24, actually I'll do 48 and do K again. And then at frame 24, we'll set a key here. Okay, and then I'm gonna limit this to 48 frames so that we can see it. And let's put it real time and play. So we have that joint deformation. And then right now, this is all within the pack folder. And if we wanted to get access to the geometry in the rig, what we're going to have to do is do a apex scene invoke. He's giving it an error, but that's okay. It's just that it doesn't have the input. So we have that information there. We want the base.rig output file. And then we can choose what we want. So if we just want the shape, that's going to be the geometry. And also we can, let's duplicate this. And instead of the shape, we will output the skeleton. So we can get the skeleton now and it will have that animation. So if we need the skeleton, we can use that. And if we need the geometry, we can use that. So that works pretty well. Let's go into the scene animate, select all of these, and I'm just going to delete these really quick. I'll delete keys and oh, let's select all of these, and then let's delete this middle key because that's the one that's different. I'll delete keys, and then I'm going to delete the other two keys now. So I'm just holding shift, click, drag to select the timeline, then right click and delete keys. We're getting the deformation. Oh, uh, we can just do reset all. And there we go. Now we're back at our defaults. That is good. What I want to show you is getting a little bit better controls that we can use. So let's do a apex configure controls. So let's add one and then the control group. Let's get rid of that. And then we have the drop down menu. Let's start off with the wrist. We can do a shape override. And there is a selection of shapes that we can use. I'm gonna just use a torso. There we go, so we have that. And then we can do a shape offset. And then rotate this. Let's do negative 90. That looks good. And then let's just transform it down a tiny bit that's too much boom, boom, boom. there we go 
and then we can maybe scale it up a little bit. There you go. So we have a control there and we can override the color. Let's say we have a red control. There you go. So we have a control there and then we can go in and add a, another control and let's add two more. So here we're going to switch out to be the elbow shape override going to be at a torus shape offset rotate 90 degrees and then let's scale it up and then let's offset this so we're going to want to move there maybe a tiny bit up there you go and i'm going to scale it a little bit more and then use color and add the red and i'm going to rotate this also here just so it makes a little bit more sense and then this third one is going to be the shoulder so we can go in shoulder shape override and we're going to use the torus again shape offset 90 let's scale this up and then i'm going to rotate the control here as well oh not that way this will be in the z nope that is good at the 90 so it has to be y yeah i don't know I was visualizing it different than what it actually was. Let's move it down and then I'm going to scale this up a little bit more. Let's uh, switch to color and we'll make it red. There we go. We have a setup here. We can control do all that. So when we go into the scene animate now, let's reset all. We can see that we have these controls now. So instead of selecting those circles, we can actually select the controls that we have here. And we can select them kind of like we were before and animate the same way. So we'll start off there, go at frame one. Actually, let's just start off here and do K and it ended at the same spot and at frame 24 just go to the other extreme uh, to extreme to extreme let's try that again there we go and then k and then let's play this there we go so we have a simple fk setup we did some custom controls and we got access back to our regular soft levels using the scene invoke uh, have some animation having a full fk setup and that's it for this video we'll see you guys in the next one bye